Hello and welcome to Sport This Morning. I'm Cecilia Amogbe. It's great to have you join us again. I'm Taya Salah. Let's get started with the Super Eagles of Nigerian sports. It's a full house for all of them. And for the Super Eagles coach talking about Gennett Bro, he says they mean serious business. Absolutely. No one is joking around when it comes to taking on Seychelles on Friday. And that's the message Gennett Bro is sending to all the players in camp for that game. 23 of them. Also on the show, I was taking a, just, a, just a step down this yep. time around. Yes, <laughs> talking about the under-23 Eagles. They'll, they'll be taking on Libya. Olympic the, Eagles. Yeah, Olympic Eagles. They'll be taking on Libya later today. Uh, they're trying to qualify for the 2020 Olympic Games. Absolutely. Qualifiers start for the African Championship. And of course, for them who won it the last time, they want to take a step further. And uh, beating uh, the charge from the coach, Imam Amakakbabo, is for them to actually spell Libya. All oh, right. For me, a win is a win. Now they can bring you back to uh, to Delta on on Monday and finish the, and business, finish the business. Exactly. Let's move on now and uh, to this time around to basketball, the NBA, where James Arden uh, made history yesterday by becoming the first player to score 30 plus points against 29 opponents faced in a single season. That's remarkable, Cecilia. Crazy, 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 crazy from him starts. on the line. 31, sinking 11 of 12 from the line. Wow, what Big a player. Uh, you, you can see why, why, why I feel uh, James Harden has to be MVP for a second year in a row. Um, the likes of uh, Giannis uh, Adetokounmpo as well as Paul George, they've you know, had very good seasons as well. Too, but I think it, it will all come down to James Harden repeating as MVP. Let's take a pause a bit on mm. James Harden. Let's talk about the games that were played in the NBA late last night and early this morning. Six games in total. Some of those teams are still trying to qualify for the for playoffs. The playoffs. While, uh, while some, some we already know Devon that Nuggets, for instance. Denver, they, they, for they example. didn't have the, 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 the champagne to actually celebrate. They had water on the night. And that was what they did. Exactly. Um, while the likes of the Lakers, we know uh, that it's very, very unlikely uh, for them to make the playoffs. All right, let's start with the matchup between the Warriors and the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves are uh, the fading badly uh, towards the end of the season. They lost against uh, the Warriors 117 to 107. And as a result of that win, the Warriors are back. They've reclaimed top spot in the Western Conference. So it's a battle between Golden State and Denver for that number one position in Incredible. the West. Incredible. No one ever saw that Denver coming. That that six times, the last six seasons they haven't been I mean 2013 that was the last time they yeah. made the playoffs they qualify for the playoffs now and they're just trying to you know finish on top of the Western Conference of course they have a battle on their hands with, with the Golden Warriors. State Warriors wanna wanna let it slide. exactly let's move on to the Lakers and the Milwaukee Bucks this matchup was supposed to be uh, between the all-star captains Giannis exactly. and LeBron James both, both players did not play. feature uh, <laughs> but it didn't take anything away from this it was still a very good game and uh, the box, of course, expectedly defeated the Los Angeles Lakers 115 to 101. The Lakers just keep fading and sliding and sliding out of playoff contention. It's as good as done now, basically, uh, because uh, I don't see how they're going to catch uh, the LA Clippers. And um, it looks like LeBron James uh, might be done for the season as well. Yeah, because he's having a groin injury. That's why he was rested for this one. one. Uncle Ianis also had an ankle injury. That's why he was also rested for this mm. one. You know, we talked about the fact that just maybe there's something wrong. Because if you check, in their last 10 games, how many yeah. have they won? And they've lost four in a row now. It's I been mean, a, in all, they've it, won just nine. It's been a, one out of 10. Yeah. It's, four in a row. It's been, a poor, here, right? it's been a poor run of form. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt about it. There's no two ways about it. And uh, it looks like they've just uh, uh, accepted, uh, you know, that, uh, yeah. that they're a bad side. And they're just going to, you know, take what, what they get. And that's perhaps I'm trying to get a, a, a good player during the, uh, uh, when it's time for them to uh, make their peak uh, later on in the offseason. But that's it for the Lakers. Let's move on to the matchup between the Charlotte Hornets taking on the 76ers and it was the Hornets and the 76ers that they got mm -hmm. winning that game by 118 to 114. JJ Reddick was two assists shy of his first NBA triple-double. This guy has played 761 career games. He's never had a triple-double. And meanwhile, so you have the... Close. So close, though. 27 
points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists. Yeah, very cool. Just two assists are short of it. And, uh, <laughs> but meanwhile, you have other players like uh, Russell Westbrook yeah, and on, James Harden making, you know, uh, triple doubles like it's going out of fashion. Know. Let's move on to the Nets and the Kings. The Kings winning, the Kings losing that one, 123 to 121. A very impressive win uh, uh, for Brooklyn Nets and Cecilia because they were down by 25 points in the fourth quarter. And uh, for them to just bounce back the way they've done, I think is very, very yeah, remarkable. Michael. So mm -hmm. good one for Brooklyn there. Still trying to make it to the playoffs. Uh, with this form they're showing, I won't be surprised. I think they will definitely get into the postseason. The Clippers okay. defeated uh, the Pacers are 115 to 109. The Clippers, like I said, uh, they're doing everything yeah, possible to get into the postseason as well. Absolutely. Too. Uh, I don't think anyone is going to stop them with it's the way gonna be hard. they are playing. Mm -hmm. Let's go about the Rockets and the Atlanta Rocks now. That's our, 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 our main uh, the game. game for today. We can see right. the pictures we saw earlier talking about James Harden, how he was able to just make that history. Yeah, incredible, incredible player. Incredible player. 31 points in all. Mm. 16 in some cases, 50, and this night, 31 that he made the history. Mm. What a player, what a player. I mean, James Harden, of course, is the leading scorer in the NBA, so he's the best offensive weapon out there. Uh, you can't take that away from him at all, and that's the reason why I feel he's going to be uh, the MVP. First player ever, ever in NBA history to score 30 plus points against 29 teams faced uh, this season. Take about James Harden uh, wherever you are. Let's talk about our standout performers on the season now. Definitely James Harden tops that bill for obvious reasons. Not only did he score 31 points, he also grabbed 8 rebounds, 10 assists, uh, and um, what a fantastic night for him. Also on our standout performer um, list is Chris, Chris Middleton. Middleton. Uh, in the absence of Giannis Adetokounmpo, yeah, he steps up big time side. for Milwaukee. He's currently 30, grabbing 10 rebounds and dishing out 5 assists. Of course, Steph Curry is yeah. also on our top performer list today. He had a very, very good game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, currently 36 points uh, in that game. Also grabbed 3 rebounds yeah. and dished out 5 assists. Fantastic one for Steph Curry, starting to gain momentum going into the Playoff. And last but not the least is yeah, the Angelo Russell. Russell. Just wait for it. I mean, how do you score 27 of that Tesla 44 points he had in the fourth quarter of the game? What a player! What I came, am. They were down. They down, were down, down, down 25 points. And 0 0.8 seconds left. I mean, it's Jefferson incredible. had this winning layup, and that was just it. Incredible. I, I have a lot of time for D'Angelo Russell. He hasn't walked out for him <laughs> um, uh, in, in the last couple yeah. of seasons, but he's starting to find his feet, and uh, there's a reason why uh, he's an all-star, and there's a reason why he's managed to get his career high, finally, for the Brooklyn. So that's it for the NBA for now. Let's yeah. just uh, move on with the show, and let's go and talk about boxing. Um, Deontay Wilder and Dominic Brazil will face off uh, in a world everywhere it's out. That's the WBC. Uh, you get to see that fight. Yes, I, I'm going to watch it because I'm a boxing, okay. I'm a boxing fan, not just a casual. Okay. Uh, but I understand what you're saying, and a lot of fans are disappointed because we thought it was going to be Wilder and taking Tyson on Tyson Fury. Fury yeah. The rematch, you know, after what happened in uh, in LA uh, last uh, December, but that's not going to happen at least yeah. for now. But there's a, fight, there's a fight to be fought yeah. uh, between Wilder and Brazil. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of bad blood between those two guys. They've had issues uh, in the past. And they finally get the chance to settle that score. That's going to be in Brooklyn on May 18th. They had a fine first uh, presser yesterday. And of course, you can see the tension uh, between both fighters. Cecilia. Yeah, absolutely. Big tension there because Brazil actually called uh, Deontay Wilder a chump and he says he talks so much to come to the ring and do more of the talking. He also accused him of not being a traditional boxer because he feels uh, Deontay Wilder is a circus. He's just running around oh. and talk and everything. He's brash and all of that. But then that's what he's doing right there. Just telling him. And if you see Dominic, he's just all calm, you know, looking at him. Remember how the, uh, Anthony Josh actually knocked down this guy and that's the only fight he's lost. Mm. So, I mean, the age, 33, 33, same age. But the thing is, 
you have uh, Deontay Wilder having about 40 something fights mm. on his better than having just 21 and 20 is one losing one. Uh, Deontay Wilder just one draw yet to lose. But let's get reactions from these guys now, starting with Dominic Brazil. Uh, you know, it, it was a big learning lesson the Joshua fight. Um, that was my first title shot. This is going to be the title shot, though. I'm fighting for the WBC title, um, and I understand I'm fighting a guy that's uh, crazy. You know, he, he just doesn't do anything uh, traditional. He doesn't uh, he doesn't throw the right proper punches. Um, at the same time, I still can't see why and, and how he's been the champ for so long. Um, but you know, when you, when you get an individual, he, he, this is the first time he's had to stare across the ring from a guy just as tall as him, heavier than him, more athletic than him, strong, and with the same amateur pedigree, man. He was a 2008 Olympian. I'm a 2012 U, uh, U.S. Olympian. Um, it's it's, it's going to be a boxing match. It's going to be a lot more traditional boxing from my side of things. Um, you know, ho hopefully he doesn't bring that circus act May 18th, but at the same time, I'm going to give the fans what they want to see. Yeah, the fight everyone wants to see. Well, for are you sure uh, about that? Uh, that's what he's I'm saying. So sure. People actually want to see the real fight. They don't want to see uh, the kind of uh, the type that Deontay Wilder Oh, what does that mean? That's, that's, I find that that's very, what he's saying. I'm not saying that. That's very, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm replying. I'm okay. responding to, okay. uh, to <laughs> Dominic Brazil. It's very disrespectful. And like I said, uh, <laughs> uh, Dante Wilder is a WBC champion <laughs> uh, for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, unbeaten, is knocked out everyone in space apart from uh, Tyson Fury. And um, yeah, so you can say anything you want about mm -hmm. his style, his unconventional method, yeah. the wild guy in the ring. Uh, he is. Uh, he's not very uh, technically the best no, boxer, at all. but he's won those fights, and it's the heavyweight division. Oh. All you need is most times your knockout power, and uh, he has it in abundance. So uh, Dominic Brazil better watch his mouth, really, uh, because I really don't see how this outcome is going to be any other thing than a knockout. I have no doubts about that. That's what we want to see, right? Yeah. And that's <laughs> what Deontay Wilder is talking about. He says he's going to do all it takes to actually give the fans what they want. Knockout, nothing more. The title of this is everything from this part going to be number one because of the, the feeling. You know, I have to go, you know, if I label excitement, of course it was the fear. I was more excited than I've ever been in my career because of the situation and the position that I was in. This right here going to top everything because of my intensity. I'm flamed up. I'm hyped without even have to get hyped. My mindset is already in camp. I'm already... I'm already on the heavy bag in my mind right now. I mean, we can say we're in a, a virtual reality. I'm just doing the interview. But in my mind, I said, I'm hitting the bag. I'm working out, man. I, I, you know, I've been getting up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, going downstairs in my house, welling it out. It's a new time, a new era for Deontay Wilder, man. And I'm about to prove it to people. We've been doing everything we said we were going to do. Certain fights are special. That's why pay-per-view is special. And I don't see nothing special about this situation for people to view unless, you know, it's going to be special to me because of what I'm going to do to him. But in, realist, in reality, then no one knows who Dominique Brazil is. If anything, the hype would be off of me and my energy and what I'm throwing out towards him. Some would criticize me for what I say and how I conduct myself. Some would love it because it's the sport and it's a business at the end of the day. And some people can't differentiate the two. Well, we'll see if Brazil will be able to check that his 14-match winning streak that is currently on. Split decision was checked by Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. But can well, Dominic be able to do that? Oh, wait, May 18th, that's a big date. We'll find out. May, May the 18th, <laughs> of course, there will be more build-up uh, to this particular fight, and we'll bring it to you uh, on the show. Let's move on from boxing now. Let's go talk Formula 1. We saw the first race of the season. That was in Australia last week, Melbourne to be precise. But this time around, we're looking ahead to 2020. There's a new city on the block. We're talking about Hanoi, Vietnam. They will be hosting the first, the first Formula One race mm -hmm. in 2020. And you, and you hear Vietnam, and you hear Formula One. And initially, your reaction is, okay, what's <laughs> going on there? Right? Like, what's going on? Yeah. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Vietnam is going to host the first Formula One race in 2020. And they've already kicked off preparations uh, for that particular historic event. Yeah, absolutely. The first test they're going to get that one is going to be around April next year. And of course, right. that's what they're thinking. I mean, South Asia, uh, uh, Vietnam, it's one of those big countries that are really coming up when it comes to 
the economy and all that. And what they're actually trying to do right now is to sign a 10-year multi-billion million dollar deal mm. with F1. That's what it signed last year. So, and this is going to cost them about $60 million a year to actually host this. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of, money, a lot money, of but big, with this? big investment uh, mm -hmm. to host the Formula One race. Uh, you're not only just hosting uh, the drivers, they're going to host uh, all the fans that are going to mm -hmm. turn up. Um, you're going to do practice and qualifying. So, uh, it's a lot of money uh, involved in this. But obviously, uh, Vietnam and Hanoi, they're very, very uh, re Hanoi, they're very yeah. ready. Uh, to do this particular uh, event, uh, 5.556 uh, kilometer circuits uh, will be constructed near the National Stadium uh, using a combination of existing infrastructure and roads to be built in a new residential area on the edge of the city. So that's everything is all mapped like. up. Uh, that's what it's looking like. Yeah. Everything is all mapped up, mapped out already. Uh, we're just waiting for April 2020 for the first F1 race ever in Vietnam. And hopefully what happened in India in 2011 and also South Korea in 2010 will not happen because both countries were actually asked from Formula One because they couldn't just keep up with it financially. And of course, this is the graphic design of what we're going to be expecting in 2020 in April. Let's get a reaction from the F1 chief. It's also fantastic for the development of motorsport in Vietnam and in the region. I really hope that uh, soon it will be also facilities to host uh, karting racing, to host uh, drifting uh, racing. I was very happy because it's a beautiful part of Asia with, uh, with culture, uh, tradition, and uh, to, to choose to host a Formula 1 race is a milestone for motorsport for Asia and for all the world. He's excited, he's happy about it, of course. You saw uh, most of the, I mean, when we saw that graphic design of what the second is going to look like, right. we saw mm, Daniel Ricciardo was actually the first. And I'm like, okay, is he going to be the one that will win the first one? Uh -huh. I'm just thinking uh -huh. aloud anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, we're still along with we'll Daniel see, Ricciardo. Uh, absolutely. Still has a lot of races yeah, to do. From the grid to the bush, what happened season. last night. Exactly, so <laughs> let's not look too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, let's spread the graphics. All, All right, then let's um, move on now with the show. Let's talk about the... Special Olympics, uh, War Summer awesome Games in Abu Dhabi, it's in Nigeria. More medals, uh, really More mean. medals, yeah. <laughs> just so expectedly, yeah. uh, like we said uh, yesterday. And um, Cecilia, the big one for me. The has football. To be yeah, seven to the side. <laughs> they got that one. They got the gold medal in yeah. that. So, which was a remarkable one for them. Because we talked about the fact that, look, whatever happened in that uh, football, it's going to be a gold or silver for them. Because already in the they're final. there in the final. Mm. And, of course, they got the bigger one, which is the gold medal. Fantastic. Congratulations to Team Nigeria and the football events of that competition. They're also, we're going to get to, so yeah, that's the, that's the team right yeah, there. Yeah, pictures from coming them, through yeah. uh, from um, yeah, the World Summer Games yeah. mm -hmm. in Abu Dhabi, in Team Nigeria winning gold. in that one. And also, uh, with the gold medal here, then the basketball also there in the final, I mean, mm. what they did yesterday also, the final is going to be today. And uh, uh, hope maybe more medals is going to come mm. for that one. But before we take a look at the basketball, let's uh, listen to the chairman of board of Special Olympics, Victor Osimondo, talking about the events and what they've been able to do since they arrived in Abu Dhabi. The motivation is very simple. You know, we're giving life to our people that have challenges. And these are people that ordinarily you think, you know, the world is no more for them. But you begin to see that they are, there is a lot of ability in their disability. And you can see that for every one person that you give hope and encouragement to, whether you are family members, cousins, and everything. So it, it's, it's a multiplier effect. And you are bringing you know, hope, happiness to a whole lot of people, the artists themselves, their families. And at the end of the day, how do you show what you even have inside you? When you say, say you have love, this is how you can show and demonstrate it. By bringing that love out and sharing it with people with the challenges. And they are very capable. It's incredible where you find them on the field of sports, you know, not really that it's the same set of people that you think, you know, like challenge. So, you know, that's, that's, that's great. You know, 
Christmas it brings joy, you know, because you, it, it brings the best out of the the aspects of being less out of the family. And that's what life is about. How do we bring the best out of people? And how do we add in value to people, even as a country, as an individual? It's all about it. Look at the whole country is just You go everywhere. All hotels, everybody is just they dedicate about three channels or four channels of that. You know, so it's, it's great, it's, it's beautiful, and it's very infectious. And for us, too, it's just something that we've enjoyed over the years. You know. And the, the, the bigger the games they are, the, the uh, organization groups in Nigeria, the more joy, the more joy that we have. We've been lucky to have great directors who have given all you know, they have, especially the 